your video or not. Yeah. And if you have any issues with Zoom or anything as we go through the different um, activities, you can send an email to bobby at culturehouse.cc and he can you know, help you out with anything you need. Great, so we're gonna start with introductions. Um, and we just have a small activity, which I know most of you have also filled out our surveys, but just to see who is here in our meeting. If, um, and the way to do this is you can either use your phone to scan the QR code or um, Bobby from Culture House has posted a link into the chat that you could use to answer the question. Uh, we just wanna know what your connection to downtown is and who we have with us today. So we can take about a minute to answer those questions, a minute or two. Good. Thank you so much for doing that. I'm really glad that we have um, mostly people who live and work in Salem and in and around downtown Salem. Um, it's great for us to know that the community is being represented in the meeting that we have today. Um, just another question, just to see for neighborhood neighbors and residents, where, um, what city and neighborhood are you logging in from? That's great. Lots of people from downtown Salem, North Salem. Yeah, it's nice to see a lot of people from in and around Salem as well.
Good. Well, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I'm really glad that we have people from different neighborhoods, as well as people with such a strong connection from for downtown Salem. So that is our introductions bit. Um, and now just moving on to what Culture House is. Um, Culture House started um, because we noticed two issues um, in cities. And one is a lack of public spaces um, that we call social infrastructure, which means places for people to gather and connect. And um, we believe that these are spaces that we need so that we um, so that we can create communities that are more sustainable, more resilient, more um, connected, and um, just more livable. As well as we realized that there was also a lot of unused spaces that was going to waste in cities. Um, and with these two observations, we kind of came up with a question of what would a pop-up indoor public space look like? And the answer to that was Culture House. Um, the mission that we follow is that Culture House improves livability in local communities by transforming unused spaces into vibrant social infrastructure, which means that we work along with the community to ensure that the spaces and social infrastructure that we create is vibrant, livable, um, resilient, and creates communities where people are connected to their city and to their neighbors. Um, our process is we follow five um, steps. That's research, community engagement, design, build, operation, and an impact report. Um, as you can see, the process um, goes through uh, different stages and we go back and forth between these stages. And um, a lot of it is um, works in and within itself and is cyclical, so it comes back and we're always going um, back to see what the research was and including the community at every step of this process. Um, so these are a few of the pop-ups that we have done in the past. This is the first pop-up, which was at Bow Market in Somerville. Um, the goal of this pop-up was to test um, the culture house model and the culture house process that we follow. Another one of our pop-ups was at Kendall Square, which is in Cambridge. And the goal for this pop-up was to kind of see, um, this was in a um, vacant storefront and Kendall Square is largely a space where you will see mostly office scores. And the goal was to get people to have a reason to come to Kendall Square and to stay at Kendall Square. And this was the pop-up that was created there. And our most recent pop-up was at Peabody, um, which was last summer, um, where people from the community realized that um, downtown Peabody and the Main Street needed more arts and culture spaces. And um, this is the pop-up that we created there. And in response to that, we also have a, um, we do have someone from the community who is also taking the space forward and the ideas from and things they learn from Culture House Peabody to apply to a space that they will be creating in Peabody as well. Um, so just kind of looking through all the pop-ups that we go through um, and understanding that we use this model of a temporary um, space to test out models and to um, create a report uh, that gives you, that would give um, long-term ideas and goals for the cities and the communities that they are in. Um, and these are broadly the impacts that the culture house pop-ups have. Um, they build crisis resilience by connecting community members to one another and creating a space for them to do that. Um, we create more livable, more um, sustainable communities, more vibrant communities, and because the process is very community driven and is from the community and from the choices, uh, from what they need and want, we spur equitable community development. Um, and that brings us to Culture House Salem. Um, so Culture House Salem, we will be at the old town hall. We are working with the city, 
Um, and the short term goals of this space are to activate, uh, sorry, are to activate and under underutilize community resource and to create a space for people to connect and engage with local artists and creatives. And the long term goal of this pop up is to serve as an incubator and testing site for future programming models for the old town hall. Um, we are currently in the community engagement phase of this project, um, which means we have been reaching out to people, um, some of you who are here today as well, um, and who might have responded to our surveys, um, and just asking you what you, um, what you like about downtown, what you wanna see more of downtown, and how you feel about the old town hall, and what you would like to see there. Um, these are just a list of few of the people that we have reached out to and who we've heard from and who we've talked to. Um, just letting you know kind of the range of people that we include in this process and whose voices are being included um, with what happens at the old town hall. Um, these are a short list. Um, there's definitely a lot that we have heard from everyone. Um, and this is what we would say are some of the things that have stuck out the most. Uh, most people have mentioned that we need more space for performances in Salem. Um, we need more equitable and, access, uh, and accessible programming for artists. Um, there seems to be a lack of signage and access to the building, as well as communication within, um, within, the, within the residents and the city um, about what is happening at the old town hall. Uh, we require uh, a lot of people mentioned that they were like if there were more things for kids to do downtown, um, as well as more diverse representation that we can see downtown, um, and also creating a space where we can highlight all of Salem's history um, and make sure that the residents have access to this history. So just another short activity. Um, Based on what we have heard, we just kind of want to know um, what do you most want to see happen at Culture House Salem? And we understand that all of these are equally important, but just want to see what um, you feel like we should be focusing on as well. Um, and the process is the same with the QR code and the link and the passcode in the chat. Definitely, this is an arts and culture focus space. So it's nice to see that we are looking for more accessible and equitable programming and more space for performances. And centering equity and diversity in the way we do that. Well, thank you so much for answering that. Um, now, in the spirit of seeing what we happen, uh, to see what happens at Culture House, I am going to pass it over to Tommy, um, who will be talking more about the design of the space. Hi, everyone. I'm Tommy. Thank you, Rishika, for setting that up for us. 
just want to say it's nice to see so many people in this meeting today. We have over 30 people. I see some familiar names. So excited to see, um, to see you guys in here. So yeah, um, my name is Tommy. I'm the design manager at Culture House. Um, I came here about a year ago and started at Culture House Peabody, um, taking through the design process for them. So I'm excited to do the same for Culture House Salem. I'm gonna share my screen for one minute while we bring up this design exercise. Oops, wait. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, So you guys should be seeing a mural board right now with a whole bunch of post-its and a, a T-chart. Um, I mean, the guys know if you guys aren't seeing this, but so for our design kickoff, we're gonna do this exercise, this visionary exercise. Um, so I want you guys to imagine um, Kotrao Salem. Um, you're walking in, it's opening day, the first day of Kotrao Salem. Um, and we're gonna go through each of the senses and brainstorm um, what you guys are seeing at Coach Salem, what you're hearing, smelling, tasting, and feeling. Um, before we do that, I'm going to do a little tutorial about how to navigate this interface here. So you can see there's a whole bunch of these post-its here. Um, to type in your response, just like click on the post-it and type in whatever you need. So for example, say I want to see art at Coach Salem. I'll type that in. If you guys run out of post-its, you could add a new post-it by clicking on this sticky note icon here, um, selecting your color, and then clicking to place that post-it, and then you could type there. You could also click on the post-it, hold down the Alt button, and drag to copy that post-it. So that's the basic navigation of the interface. So we're going to do this exercise. Um, I'm going to have Bobby's going to send out the link to this mural board. And um, he's going to do that through the chat. If you guys can't find the chat, you can also go to this link here called bit.ly Salem design. I'm going to give a minute for everyone to jump in. I'm seeing some arrows already. Um, Get yourselves familiar with the um, interface and then once I see a couple more people we could start going through this exercise. Could everyone just take a minute to stop? We're gonna go through each um, sense one by one together. I see some people typing already. <laughs> okay, lots of people in here. Let's start off with the seeing sense. So everyone drag to the seeing column. So we're walking into Kocha Salem. What do you guys see? We'll take maybe a couple, two to three minutes to fill out this section. Try to be as specific, but also um, there are no limits to, guys, to what you guys see. Um, I guess your imagination is your only limit here. Um, yeah.
Also, if anyone's having problem accessing the mural board or doesn't know how to navigate it, feel free to type your responses in the chat and we'll have Bobby um, paste your response on the post-it note. seeing a lot of art here, visual and performing arts, colorful banners, interactive experience, local art, also history, diversity. I'll give another minute for you guys to wrap up this section. Okay, finish your last post this year. We have a lot to work from. It's amazing to see. Okay, it looks like we have a pretty full board here. <laughs> so let's move on to the next sense. Next sense is hearing. What are you guys hearing at Coach House Salem? I see a lot of laughter, some live music. Or I like the meaningful conversations, collaboration, different languages, different diverse voices about that one. Let's have another minute or two here.
Okay, let's wrap up the, the hearings column. Finish your last post-its. And let's move on to the smelling and taste column. So this one might be a little tricky, but try to get as creative with what are you smelling and what are you tasting at Culture House Salem. White paint. <laughs> oh, that. The tastes of different cultures and communities that make up Salem. That's a great one. Local diverse foods. Let's do about two or three more minutes. Immersive art installations that activate all five senses. Local food and beverages. Plants and soil, that's a good one. Empanadas. <laughs> okay, seems like we're slowing down a bit. So let's wrap this column up and move on to the feeling sense. So for touch, sense we're going to do feeling um what are you feeling in your heart um what kind of feelings do you want to um what kind of feelings do you want to come up when you're visiting coach house salem um how do you what kind of emotions pop up um how do you want you and your family to feel yeah i see a lot of including inclusive and included couple happy. Curious, I like that one. Relax.
Let's do a couple more minutes here. Need some more. I see people are still writing. Oh, I think we need a bigger board. We're really overflowing. <laughs> Okay, let's wrap up our last post-it notes here. Okay. This is amazing. We have so many post-its to work with. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna take a step back and look at our board from a full picture point of view. Um, if you guys are still seeing my screen, the next thing we're going to do is start making some connections between these post-its. So if you click on a post-it, you'll see these four blue dots on each side of the post-it. And you could click on the dot and drag it to another post-it. So um, if you see a connection between feeling and seeing, you go ahead and drag a line to connect those post-its. So for example, I see, uh, let's see, I see a lot of local voices and diversity. Um, hearing that helps me feel included. I'm gonna drag local voices to include here. And if this makes you think of any post-its, feel free to keep adding post-its if it spurs any other thoughts. <laughs> I see a connection between peaceful and wet pink <laughs> or risk taking wet pink. <laughs>
Let's take a couple more minutes doing this. Maybe like three or four more minutes. It's gonna look like a huge pile of spaghetti at the end with all these lines. <laughs> Okay, I think we're all slowing down a bit. So, um, it's gonna take a bit to navigate all these spaghetti lines, but I'm seeing a couple big themes here. I see a lot of, of the like diversity and inclusion notes being welcoming and belonging. Um, I'm seeing a lot of local art, Live music and celebrating what kind of diverse art and music we have to offer. Some common themes of history, being educated about Salem and the building. Okay, I'm going to start a new text box here and just you know, jot down some of these themes. If everyone, if anyone's noticing some big things either that I'm missing, feel free to call them out in the chat or also you could raise your hand and we could unmute you. I like what people are saying about learning about Salem, um, like being curious about what we have to offer, um, being educated about Salem, like there's an opportunity.
Okay, let's wrap up here. Everyone can finish your last lines and post-its. Wow, okay. Lots to go through and work through with this. But this is great to get so much feedback from you guys. Okay. So my next step is to take all the this feedback that you guys gave us and kind of synthesize it into a couple of full bullet points to help direct the design of Koshal Salem. Um, but yeah, feel free. Everyone could go back to their um, Zoom page. Um, I'm going to keep the screen share up. But yeah, thank you everyone for participating in this. This is really exciting to see like all these post-its and really interesting things that you guys are saying. I love the, the like, also the like funny, interesting things you guys saying, um, art diversity. Um, cool. So once I'll go through this information, I'm gonna touch back with the advisory group meeting. If, if there's any advisory group members in here, you'll see some initial designs for Cultural Salem. But yeah, thank you again for everyone um, doing this with me. I'm really glad to invite the community into this design process. And then I'm going to pass it back off to Rishika to wrap up a bit. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Tommy. That was great. Oops. <laughs> that has to happen in a Zoom meeting. Oops, again, <laughs> oh, are we good? I think we're good now. <laughs> uh, well, that was a great design kickoff. Um, uh, we always find new ways to ask you what you want to do in your space and find out what more you want to see in your city and your community. Um, and I'm glad that you all are able to be here today and answer those questions and be a part of that process with us. Um, I know um, I did go through the initial um, Culture House and Culture House Salem um, information really fast. So I just wanna now just give more of a space for all of you to ask questions. Um, so we can do that by either putting them in the chat or you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, I am gonna stop sharing my screen just so that all of us can kind of virtually be together. <laughs> Great. Um, please feel free to unmute with any, sorry, raise your hand with any questions or in the chat. We have a question from Laura. Will the fact that Old Town Hall is in a pedestrian only area be considered in designing the space? Um, Tommy, do you want to answer the question? Yes, that's a big consideration that I have not thought of, but that's a great way, great point that you brought up. Um, yeah, we're definitely thinking about how people are getting to Old Town Hall too. Um, I know there's a lot of like pedestrian only people, how people. Maybe some people are taking a car or a bike. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll no, definitely note that down in the designing of a space and also thinking about how people access the, the entrances of the space. Like there's those like stairs there. Um, there's a back, the back door that isn't very noticeable from the front of the pedestrian walkway. So thinking about how we could direct people using signage and employee fighting to just even enter the space. Um, but yeah, great point, um, Laura. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, um, we have Lev who has raised their hands. I will unmute you. Yep. Yeah, hi. Thanks for unmuting me. Um, mm -hmm. My question was sort of about what the intent of the space is to be. Is this meant okay. to be? A, a fully programmed space where people walk into a presentation or is this meant to be sort of an organic community space where I can 
walk in and find a place to sit and and do whatever me and my three friends mm -hmm. keep it yeah yeah that's a great question so we wanted to be a community space we wanted to be a space for salem so while we will be having arts and culture events and programming in this space along with that we will have what we call a living room space which is um, an open space for anyone in the community to come in, to sit in the space, to just be there, maybe have coffee, um, to just experience the building as well. So to answer your question, yes, it will also be a space that you can come in um, and walk through and be a part of. Yes, thank you for that question. Um, we have, Emily Cooper, who is asking, are you taking up just the first floor or the second floor as well? Um, thank you. That is a very important question. We Culture House is Salem is mainly going to be activating the first floor. Um, so most of our events um, that will go through Culture House will happen there. Uh, we are working with the city. So any events that would need more space or require additional um, special consideration or requirements for the programming will be sent to the city and the city will be looking after the second floor so yes mainly the first floor is what where culture house will be um and then we have one from susan marsh what are the next steps and what is the budget um our next steps are do uh, we are spending the next month working on programming and scheduling for the space um, and uh, that as well as designing the space um, and making sure that everything is accessible and open for the community and everyone is ready to use in April. Um, as far as the budget is concerned, we um, have been allotted a budget with the city and have been working on grants um, applications for this project as well. So a lot has gone in um, to do that, as well as ensuring that all artists are equitably compensated um, in the space. And um, we also want to let you know that all events in this um, Ad Culture House are free to the public. So a lot of our budget goes into ensuring that all the events um, can be free to the public as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, Madeline Wright, you have your hand up. Um, Hi, um, I have two questions. The first one sure. is, I'm curious what sorts of programming you've seen in past culture houses that have been most successful and have kind of like gained the most traction and been the most viable, like just simply and like in your kind of opinion, knowing the space of the old town hall, um, kind of what you envision being most successful. And then the second part is I'm just curious what the um, like what happens once the pop-up is over, how we transition into permanent programming and, and kind of what that process looks like? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, thank you. Um, so the goal for this pop-up is to test out different models for this space. And eventually we will be creating a report that will go to the city so that they, once they start, which I think they already have started the process of um, seeing how the Old Town Hall can be a permanent arts and culture space. Um, that report will help um, help them know uh, recommendations from us of what worked while we were there and what didn't work. Um, in our past pop-ups, we have tried a varying range of events. They could be musical performances, um, art workshops, um, wellness workshops. Um, we've had uh, vendor markets. Um, so. We've tried a very different type of events, and a lot of that depends on what the community wants to see. Um, in the next two weeks, we'll be taking out a call for artists and programming for the space, where you as a community will be able to apply to see, to tell us what you want to see in the space and how you want to do that. And our goal is to figure out how we can do that in the space, which will ultimately inform um, the city of how that can be accomplished in the space. Um, I hope that answered your question or did I forget something? Um, I guess just follow up is 
what have you seen? And I know this is totally particular, sure. to like every community and every yeah. different space, but um, I'm just sort of curious what you've seen that's been kind of most successful and like most well-received. Sure. I think it depends from um, pop-up to pop-up that we've done. It all depends on what the community responds to. Um, and as well as days and times that the pop-ups are open and events that happen there. Um, so you wouldn't specifically be able to say what events have worked and what haven't. The goal is to use this as a space to test out um, to see what might work in that space specifically. Okay, yes, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, oh, well, there's a lot of questions. Um, so one is how will scheduling of use of the space be determined? Yes. Um, so in the next two weeks, we'll be taking out a call for um, artists and collaborators, uh, which will be sent out to everyone, uh, which will include a form to let you know the days um, that Culture House Salem will be open and the times that we'll be open, as well as laying out the base structure um, uh, so that you know how we will be compensating um, artists and creatives and other organizations to be in the space. Um, so all of that will be sent out to you. Once those forms are filled up and we receive them, we will be just planning them and putting them into our calendars to see how they work for you and for Culture House. Um, as of now, um, we are looking to be open consistently. Um, the goal is to have this space um, be accessible and have people know that the Old Down Hall is gonna be open for at least three to four days between a certain time. And we will be working more on that in the next two weeks. Um, I hope that answers that. Um, Jane says the town hall was originally designed as a marketplace on the first floor. Um, you have not talked about using that yet. Um, yeah, thank you so much for um, letting us know. We will definitely be looking at that in our programming too. Um, and a part of our call will be to see who wants to put up in the space. We are looking at um, maybe having one vendor who wants to be in the space for the day or having a structure where we have days where we have a market and everyone can be there all at once too. Um, will you, sorry, Eric Small says, um, will you be working with traditional existing cultural events or only booking the pop-up events? Um, so as I mentioned, we are working along with the city um, while we are there um, in April, May, and June, the first floor, um, any programming that happens at Old Town Hall will go through Culture House, but we are working um, alongside the city. So any events such as the Salem Arts Festivals will all be, um, will all be worked on together. Um, we have someone who says that you seem to have made up your mind that it would be for arts and culture without consulting other users. Um, I completely understand that. Um, and one of our goals is to also make this a community space. So to understand what a public space looks like and how when there is no events and programming happening and programs happening at the old town hall, we wanted to still be open for other users. Um, we want people to come in and be able to have a book club, to be able to have community meetings in there. We want it to be a space that is accessible for you. Um, while it is right now being studied as an arts and culture space, it is also being studied as a community public space. Yeah, how will you be promoting events at Culture House? Yeah, um, thank you for asking that. We um, will, I will be um, sending out more, sorry. Um, I will be, um, so we do have a website um, that I will be sending you the link to where we will be posting up the calendars and events that are coming up um, as well as social media where we will be putting it up on our own social media that you can follow as well. Um, as well as we have created an, an advisory group within um, the community of Salem, which includes residents, um, different organizations, different artists um, living and working in Salem that would be um, also helping us get the word out there. So if you would like to be a part of that as well, of the process of getting the word out there, please reach out to us and we can make you a part of that too. Um, 
Do we have more questions? Um, good. Um, I did um, just before I um, moved towards the end, I did want to give um, Julie Barry, who is at the city, um, who we are working with, um, just a little um, time to also talk to you a little more about Old Town Hall so you have more of an idea of um, what is supposed to happen there and what the future for it might look like. Thank you so much, Riska, and thank you, um, Riska and Tommy, for the presentation and um, to all of our community members who are here with us this evening. Um, I wasn't able to turn on my video, otherwise I would let you uh, see my face, but I'm Julie Berry. I'm the Senior Planner for Arts and Culture for the City of Salem, and I um, just thought that it might be helpful, given some of the, um, the previous questions, for you guys to understand um, the, the sort of process that the city is undergoing at the moment. Um, and so we have engaged a design firm who um, through a public bid process that was um, sent out last year. Um, actually, let me back up a little bit further. In 2019, the city conducted, um, before I started with the city, um, they conducted a community um, survey as well as a uh, full assessment of the building. And so as part of this full assessment of the building, top to bottom, um, they you know, let us know what needed to be repaired, um, what was broken, what was damaged. Um, and then during that process, they also conducted a market survey and business um, model analysis. And they uh, sought to get input from the, the surrounding area and other community members to help inform what could potentially be in the space. And one of the things that came out of that was the recommendation for a, um, an arts and culture facility in downtown. Um, and so moving sort of in that direction, we started thinking about um, the design of the building as such and how we could make the space more user friendly, how we could potentially have multiple events happening in the space at the same time, how to increase capacity, increase safety and increase access, um, accessibility in general. Um, and so we entered into a design phase that we're in now um, with an architectural firm called Mills Whitaker Architects. Um, they are a historic architect renovation firm. And we're going to be installing an HVAC system, ventilation, fire suppression, sound baffling um, that would dampen the sound between the floors, um, increasing accessibility, as well as renovating the basement to offer community meeting space, renovated bathrooms, et cetera. So we're currently in the design and fundraising phase for this project. Um, we're looking at um, a multi-million dollar restoration effort um, that's currently being designed and we are seeking grants for that project right now. Um, in the meantime, while we're sort of doing the design work and the fundraising for this, we thought it would be a prime opportunity to test out the business model that was recommended to us. Um, and so that's where Culture House comes into play. So they are sort of doing being a testing ground they're really a community impact study um, that's invested in the space they're going to be doing a lot of research a lot of community engagement data collection review of um, approach review of activities and to see if this business plan model that was recommended of having an arts and culture space does in fact bear itself out as to being um, sustainable, something that the community wants to see in the space, and then if so, how we might turn that into a viable business plan um, using the input that we've gathered um, during this process and the data that we've learned uh, during this process. So I just thought that that might be helpful um, for this group to, to know and understand. And if there's any questions about that, I would be happy to, to take them. Um, but if not, I'm also happy to turn it back over to Risha Kevin Tommy and let the Culture House team take it away. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, does anyone have any questions for Julie um, or questions on what Julie just explained or um, talked about? My pleasure. 
<laughs> and so the the next phase, we're hoping to have the construction fully funded um, so that we can do the construction all at once to keep the building, the impact to the area and, and, and its dormant phase very limited um, so that it can quickly re-become a community resource and asset. And then on the other side of the renovations, um, we'll be looking to implement a sustainable business model that would have an operations budget and um, potentially an operator that's outside of the city, potentially the city as an operator. So there's a lot of different models that we can continue to test out over the next couple of years that um, Culture House will help us inform. So thank you guys so much for being here. And we're excited to see where this leads us. And your, your voices are paramount in this project. Um, so please reach out to all of the, your fellow community members and friends, relatives, um, co-workers, anybody, and let them know that this project is happening so that we can get your voices at the table um, to help guide us through this process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I also just wanted um, closing out um, on the meeting um, just to kind of share the next steps and um, things that are coming up as we look at opening on April 1st. Um, in the next two weeks, um, we are looking to get out a call for artists and collaborators, um, which will include the form and include the base structure and programming schedule, um, which will be sent out to everyone and will be available on our website as well. Um, so that's something you can look out for in the first week of March. Um, the next is um, we did meet a few people last weekend when we were uh, outside Old Town Hall during, during Salem So Sweet. And we are planning to be there again, just to engage with the community some more, answer some surveys, get to know more about what you wanna see happen at Old Town Hall. And you can see more of us um, during the last two weeks where we'll be at Old Town Hall, um, building out the designs based on um, the activity that you did with Tommy today. Um, and the schedule, um, as I mentioned, will be available um, on the website, which is culturehouse.cc um, slash Salem. Um, and we've put those links um, in the chat as well. And you can sign up for our newsletter and get project uh, updates from there, um, as well as you can email us at salem at culturehouse.cc with any ideas you have, any questions, concerns, um, as well as we're always looking for more people to be a part of this project to volunteer and help us make through um, go through this process. So we have, um, we're looking for volunteers to be able to staff the space while it's open, as well as could also help us with build out in the space with Domi too, um, and the Culture House DM. And lastly, opening day, which is April 1st. Um, so I just want to say thank you. And thank you for being here today. And for all of you coming and taking out the time to do the activities, answer our questions, as well as um, asking yours. Yeah. Um, as well as if you do have any more questions about the old town hall, you can also email um, Julie Barry at the city and her email is jbarry at salem.com. Thank you.